My brothers and sisters in Christ, today on December 17th, we enter the period of time that the church calls Late Advent. It's not a formal name, but it's the time where the normal accounting of, of passing of time in the liturgical year by weeks, for example, the first week of Advent, second week of Advent, third week of Advent, gets superseded by a direct day countdown to Christmas that becomes the liturgy of December 17th, December 18th. It's actually day by day on this countdown. And part of this, this countdown, this intensity, is accompanied or is, is found in a very beautiful and ancient tradition in the church. And that is in the praying of the O Antiphons. The O Antiphons are primarily rooted in the divine office, the liturgy of the hours. Uh, which, of course, as the prayer of the church originated in the monastic communities uh, in the early Middle Ages. But the O Antiphons themselves, therefore rooted in this tradition, came into being somewhere between the 5th and 8th centuries. It's hard to trace exactly when with certainty. But these O Antiphons, one each day, and they, are, they accompany the praying of the Magnificat at Vespers each evening, but all of them are these types or images from the Old Testament prophets that in the vocative case, if you're familiar with ancient language, the vocative case address Christ under some symbol. And so, for example, the first one today, which I'll get to, is O Sapientia, O Wisdom. And it proceeds to go through O Wisdom, O Day Spring from on high, O Root of Jesse. A lot of them are images from Isaiah, but other places. And so they address God in these different titles preparing for his coming. And so this is a wonderful way as the, the, the countdown to Christmas commences, starting with December 17th, of looking at how he comes in fulfillment of the Old Testament covenant, the promises, the prophets, Christ comes to fulfill it all. And so these images, these types, these prophecies are invoked as a manner of tracking the coming of Christ at Christmas. And so there's one each day, and starting from today up till Christmas, I'll switch my attention in these daily reflection videos from reflections on the readings themselves to reflection on each day's O Antiphon uh, as embedded uh, in the, the, the scriptural tradition. So another thing to keep in mind with these O Antiphons is that they've, they spell out, and of course the original O Antiphons are all based in the Latin. So we translate them into English, but the Latin themselves, very interestingly, and many, many scholars argue over whether this was intentional or not, uh, at least intentional by human beings. I've long since learned the hand of God is on things even when the human actors don't know. But if you take in backwards order from the O Antiphon of December 23rd all the way back to December 17th, if you take the first letter and make an acrostic of it, and medieval writers were very fond of acrostics if you've, if you've done a lot of reading from them. But the acrostic spells out ero cross in Latin, which means tomorrow I come. And so it's very beautiful that if you pray the O Antiphons every day, you find yourself by the end ending with tomorrow I come on December 21st, uh, December 23rd evening prayer, praying that, okay, tomorrow evening, we'll be praying the arrival of Christ, the nativity of the Lord at the Vigil Mass. And so it's a beautiful way of praying and preparing with these images for Christ. There's resources in the home, you can do so. Our own Stephanie Aquila provides many of these kind of resources at home. But whether in the praying of the daily office, looking at the verse that accompanies the Alleluia each Mass, or perhaps even commemorated in a way that a lot of people don't recognize, the hymn that you hear so often during Advent, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Each verse is based in the O Antiphons. And so Emmanuel is the last of the O Antiphons, the one of December 23rd, O, o Emmanuel. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. But then you'll pray the next verse, O, o Come, O Come, Wisdom. 
O come, O come, you know, root of nations, all, all of these different things. And so the, the, this tradition of the O antiphons is embedded in the life of the church and her liturgy at this time of year. So I greatly encourage you and your families to pray with them. With all of that being said, I want to switch quickly to the first of the O antiphons, as today is December 17th, and that is O Sapientia, O Wisdom. This is a very beautiful image because we celebrate uh, on Christmas Day, of course, uh, we hear the great prologue of John, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The incarnate Word is what John focuses on. The idea that the word, Jesus is the Word of God spoken. The wisdom of God spoken in the flesh is the one who comes. And this is foreshadowed in Old Testament literature and the way in which wisdom was often personified as a person. Most fascinatingly, often in the feminine, in the sense of lady wisdom, as you read, and there would be this contest between wisdom and folly. And so this itself was an Old Testament type of the coming wisdom of God, the coming Christ in the flesh, the word of God spoken. And then, of course, we hear uh, in the prophet Isaiah he, that he speaks of the, the, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus will quote this and echo this in Luke chapter 4 in the synagogue. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and speaks of the gift of wisdom of God, one of those gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so, it's a wonderful way to start the praying of the O Antiphons. O wisdom, O wisdom from on high, O come. And so, may we indeed, brothers and sisters, pray for the coming of the wisdom from on high, the word of God spoken, of given to us, and also pray that that gift of the Spirit may dwell in our hearts. May God bless you all.